Hey there, welcome to the Buck 99 Podcast. I am Aaron on the Movie Prof, and tonight we're going to look at a few different things. Uh, I'm going to leave some of it as a surprise. We're going to, we're going to look at some retro gaming. We're going to look into a, uh, a certain specific company collection-wise, because I've updated my uh, my collection with them as well. So uh, i got a, a nice few things to show you guys. I'm going to grab some tea. I'll be right back. You can get some tea, hot chocolate, coffee, or whatever you drink. And uh, then we'll get right into uh, the latest edition of the Buck 99 Podcast. Hey there, so I've got my tea now, but the first thing I want to say before we even start off with this podcast is I want to give you guys some uh, some news, some uh, movie uh, sale news. Uh, right now, Screen Archives has a has a big sale on Code Red DVDs. There's a few of them that are on sale. It ranges anywhere from one from a dollar ninety five to two ninety fives. There's some that are three and three ninety five, four ninety five. There's even a couple there uh, special editions like DVD. And these are the DVDs, not the Blu-rays. That uh, run anywhere between six to seven ninety five. So there's there's a few there. Uh, I think that there's a page of them to check out if you uh, if you want if you're inclined to do so. At another time, I would there's so many there, I would get a bunch of them. But I just got back from Ontario, so more than likely I'm uh, I'm not going to get a chance to do that. So I wanted to do like kind of a collection thing. I wanted to do like some retro gaming talk, and um, just talk about some other stuff as well. So. One thing I'm not going to do with this one is the Spoiler Theater, which I normally do in my Buck 99 podcast, and the reason that it is because I'm saving all of those for my Halloween Horathon videos. As like I mentioned before, I'm not doing like the the 31 days of horror, or the 50 days of horror, or, or Halloween that type of thing. I'm basically doing the Halloween Horathon, so you're going to see a lot of reviews on a lot of different films, both new and old, here on this uh, channel in the month of October. Uh, hopefully, 31 or more. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm aiming for. So uh, let's see how that goes. Now let's start off with the retro stuff first. Hopefully you guys don't mind that. So I was in I was in Ottawa, and I went to uh, this uh, this flea market in uh, Sitzville, and they had like a lot of stuff. There was an amazing amount of DVDs and and uh, books. There was even like a Barbie museum inside. Uh, I kid you not. Not you know you couldn't buy the Barbies. There are actually Barbie museums that actually could go in and look at all these Barbies from uh, from different generations, from different eras. So I go in there and I get like a, a bunch of stuff. I get my uh, my Charlie Chan and I I'm grabbing my uh, my Tim Ritter Truth or Dare three, and I'm walking back to this table because they have a couple things I want. And one of the things is that Sesame Street set that I showed you guys because. Uh, Part of my childhood, I want to get that, and they have like a uh, season Xena, which I also picked up as well. But right on the uh, corner of that table, and it wasn't there before; it was more recently put out. Was a uh, was a system that I was very interested in. It was a uh, it was a PS2, a PlayStation 2. So it's actually this one right here, the uh, the fat one. So. Uh, I asked her how much she wanted for it. Now, originally she wanted like uh, 15. And uh, there were some sets and TV shows she had there that were like uh, five bucks each. So I uh, asked her, I took three sets, which would have been 15. And I took the system here, which would have been about, uh, which would have been like $30. So she uh, she went down to 20. So I actually got the system for uh, for five. So I took it kind of sight and seen, not knowing if this was going to work or not. Uh, when I got back to uh, my sister's house, I just plugged it in. Uh, we couldn't really like check it because um, she just had one of the HDMI, you know, the newer flat screen TVs, and without the right uh, connection, that's not going to really work. So you'll see like the black and white, but you won't be able to really do anything. It'll be like lines through it. So um, the thing is, I've got a CRT TV here at home, which I retro game on. It had the cover for the expansion pack still there as well, so which was kind of cool. You know, that's where the expansion pack goes, and also where basically the uh, the Wi-Fi adapter would go as well. So, um, and it's the fat one, which is the one I wanted. I, you know, I'd get like a slim if I could find for like five or ten bucks down the road, just have a kind of a backup. But that's not so much necessary now. You're going to find it why in a second. So, this is the actual system from uh, from Ottawa. I got back home. And the first, the very first thing I did, because the big geek that I am, I want to, I plugged it in right away. I want to make sure that it, uh, that it worked. And I had a game for it. I bought a game there for under $5. And I'll show you what that is afterwards. <clears throat> and the screen came up fine. It showed, you know, browser, you know, the, basically the uh, configuration type thing, settings play thing. But it wouldn't move. 
It even had like a memory card with it, by the way. It had, a, it had the, uh, you know, the standard 8 megabyte memory card as well. Uh, and I wondered, is the system messed up? Is, is the controller screwed? Is, the, uh, is it the memory card? Something wrong with the memory card? My bet was on <clears throat> that the controller wasn't working. So I said, okay, so close, but yet so far, because I'm collecting consoles. I'm collecting consoles like pretty much PS2, GameCube, you know, and like anything back like that, that's kind of the ones that I want to get. Uh, the PS2 is one, of my, is one of my favorite consoles of all time. And uh, a lot of my favorite games, be it like Tony Hawk or uh, some of the SmackDown games or some of the other, you know, games that I played are on this console. There's like over 1,800 games that came out for the PS2. Uh, at least, I think around 1,500 of them uh, or close to are, uh, are North American. So needless to say, getting this started off a new, like, aspect to my collecting. As you guys already know, I've got the Retron. I collect NES games uh, when I can find them, like for a decent price, just good ones. And uh, now I get the PS2 that opens up a whole new world of, uh, of game collecting. And, you know, collecting not just regular games, but games that can actually relate to, uh, to cinema as well. Because there's a lot of really cool, like, uh, cinema-related games, movie-related games, genre-related games that came out on this, uh, on this system, and games that I just wanted to play. Now, Knowing it didn't work was was crushing. It was heartbreaking. So I decided, okay, I'm going to go into town in a couple days, probably the weekend, and I'll get a controller and see if see if that'll fix it. So, just for fun, I went on Kijiji that night while I was waiting. Now there was a guy that was selling off uh, these systems here, these fat PS2s, for uh, for fifteen dollars. He had. He had like, uh, I think he had two left. And uh, I said, oh, is it working okay? Is the controller working good? And it's like, yeah, the controller's fine. And I said, I can give it to you for 15, which was what I paid for this one here. I, so I was kind of a little wary at first. But I said, okay, if this, this system works here and, and if the other system doesn't work, at least I got a controller. If the work, controller works fine, then I'm good. And I, I'll just get another controller or two down the road. Because you're going to want a couple controllers anyway. Maybe like a multi-tap or something. Uh, but, uh, so we talked for a bit a day or so, and uh, I was nervous because he didn't get back to me really fast. And uh, I thought he said, "I thought okay, maybe he doesn't want to do it." But you know, it was, it was during the middle of the week. The uh, the guy was working, so he couldn't actually uh, come and uh, come and meet. So basically, we finally get out, get around. We go to meet. I come home. First thing I do before I even take that other con system out of the bag, I just take the controller, just the controller, and I attach it to this system right here, I turn on my CRT TV, and uh, flick the switch. And lo and behold, perfect. The system works fine, it was the controller. Um, so what I, uh, what I did then was I erased everything that was on the memory card from when I got it, and uh, I said, okay, I'm going to use the, the system that I got the other day, and I'm going to have a backup system, like one to basically be in the in the room or probably one of the kids' rooms where we kind of like put a, if we get like a smaller TV to put in there, that basically can, they can they can game in there and maybe watch some DVDs and stuff. Uh, PS2 is great. It's a great DVD player, just the same way the PS3 was a great Blu-ray player. So uh, that was exciting there. So the game that I got first, was uh, so now I've got two working PS2s and one working controller and one eight meg megabyte memory card. And uh, if anybody ever has any old gaming stuff or PlayStation 2 games or stuff that are just lurking around that they just that they're not playing or tossing, uh, I'm collecting whatever I can when it comes to that stuff. So honestly, feel free. You don't have to. It's not like a wreck, <laughs> but you know if it's if it's there and you're not using it. You know, so I picked up one game, and it was one that I had played a lot. Now, if you were, were watching, and not a lot of people watch, the one where I just did, like, where I showed off some of my, uh, pretty much my game collection, whether it be Xbox One or PS4, and, like, my one PSP game. I had one PSP game, and I'm not sure if you guys remember what that is, but if you watch my channel, you probably do remember what it is. And uh, that was SmackDown vs. Raw 2006. And the reason that I held on to that game for so long, even though I haven't had a PSP for quite a while, is that I was looking for a new PSP, some with a you know with the working back 
so that I can play SmackDown 2006. And the reason I wanted to play that game specifically is there was a general manager mode. Uh, see, SmackDown series from 2006 to 2008, so 2006, 2007, 2008, ran a general manager mode that's no longer on the uh, system. It's, got, it's a much more complicated mode that is junk right now, actually. But there was originally, much like uh, Adam Ryland's uh, Extreme Warfare Revenge, there was, for three years, this amazing general manager mode. Uh, I really loved the, uh, the fr I loved all of them, but I loved the first one because it just had a, a raw simplicity to it. Basically, you you get a specific amount of money. Uh, there's, a, there's a draft, so you can get up like the 20, 20 wrestlers. And then you go in, you start booking your shows. You can you can play the game, you know you can play those matches. Or you can just like simulate them. Uh, you go through and you're planning your you plan your feuds, your rivalries, all that type of stuff. I just had a lot of fun with it. So obviously that's the first game that I went out and I and I grabbed was a PlayStation 2 SmackDown vs. Raw 2006. Now I'm looking for 2007 and 2008 because I remembered the GM mode on this and I knew there was one. Um, on 2007, but I'd forgotten that there's one on 2008 because in 2008 they actually expanded a little bit and it's SmackDown and Raw and ECW. So, luckily, when I got this here, that it is complete, so it has the uh, comes with the manual uh, disc in perfect condition. You don't need to see the manual, really, it's just you know, standard, standard manual, but uh. It's great to have it like complete in the box for uh, for under five dollars. I picked up this one up for, and there's like you know, graphics aren't quite the stylish that they are right now. But you know what? Uh, the graphics that really it hasn't gotten a lot better. <laughs> uh, it's gotten a little. It's gotten better, but it, there's still like if you look at the female wrestlers on some of those modern day wrestling games, yeah, there's not much of a change. So after I got that. I went down to, uh, to Chumley's video on Bank Street in Ottawa, and uh, I saw one for a dollar that I had to have because I was a big fan of this company. The only ever put out one wrestling game. It was a really good wrestling game, except for, uh, for base. it played like a beta. So basically, it was very stripped down. A lot of the, some of the wrestlers actually didn't have the right finishing moves. Uh, it was, there wasn't a lot of modes to it, but the ones that were there, and the style of wrestling that was used uh, in the game itself were, was excellent. The uh, the graphics were great on the on, on the game, and it just had a really great control style, a really nice, comfortable set that I really found easy to work with. So I was eagerly awaiting the follow up to this game. Unfortunately, the company that was making this, um, they the, well the actual company was making this. They they went. They're gone. Um, but it's uh, TNA Impact. You know, I'm, I was a huge fan of Impact back in the day. The AJ Styles, uh, uh, Kurt Angle, the Christopher Daniels, Curry Man. Uh, some of you guys are not going to understand at all what I'm saying when it comes to this stuff. But if you're a wrestling fan, this is going to bring back memories for you. And they actually created a character for the game called uh, called Suicide. It was kind of a luchador type of character. And uh, they put him into. They actually took him, took that costume because it's a really cool costume, and they uh, put it into. Uh, into actual TNA wrestling, which is really silly and cheesy. Now, unfortunately, this one here wasn't wasn't completely complete. It doesn't have the uh, the booklet, but uh, I'm okay with that. I'll find the booklet down the road because uh, I would like to have a complete edition of uh, TNA Impact. Yeah, you got Sting there. You know, these are guys that you guys, if you watch wrestling now and you you've only ever watched WWE, a lot of these guys are gonna look really familiar to you. <laughs> so there you'll see, uh, of course, uh, Samoa Joe. AJ Styles is kind of leaping off there. And I think that's Booker T in the background. Yeah, it's Booker T and AJ Styles. That's a, not the best AJ Styles one. Um, like, we got like uh, featuring more than 20 wrestlers. So, yeah. Uh, Kurt Angle, Sting, AJ Styles, Christian Cage, which was just called there because he couldn't be called Christian. Um, Samoa Joe. And this used the, uh, the six sided ring, which I really like. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm sorry I'm, I'm geeking out about this, but I, I was really excited to get this game again. I've had this game in every format except for the uh, the iOS edition because I want controls, not some stupid touch stuff. So I was at the guy's place picking up the uh, the system the other day, and he had like a few games there. Uh, I'm probably going to go back and get more of them, 
But what I wanted right away was the, uh, the being the armchair jock that I am, um, <clears throat> I wanted a couple of, of the sports titles for my system. I know you, the more boring titles I'm trying. But here's the thing. Um, I like playing the, uh, a lot of the sports games. I find they're easy to pick up and play. But the big, big thing for me is the soundtracks. Like the same reason like I got into, uh, I even started turning on Tony Hawk on the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 in the first place was, was the amazing soundtracks. That's so like stuff for like SSX games. Uh, I got into them, like loved playing them once I got into them. But what drew me to them originally were the soundtracks. G GTA, for instance. Vice City came, came out. I, you know, I played a bit of 3. I didn't play 3 as much as uh, a lot of people did. Vice City came out set in the 80s. 80s soundtrack. Man, I was playing Vice City all the time. And it got to the point when I was uh, basically... Because I had my uh, had my PS2. And what I'd do is I'd... Because uh, the kids were young. I'd turn on the uh, the game. And i put it onto a station that I liked. And I'd go park my uh, my car on, uh, on Vice City. And I just let the uh, the '80s music play through, while uh, while we went off and did stuff around the house. It was it was really incredible. So uh, obviously, I'm going to give Vice City again, uh, along with the other PS2 ones probably. So Grand Theft Auto Three, I think, is on the PS2 and San Andreas as well. Was there another one? Uh, there there might have been a Catamari de Masi is another one that I really want. The Catamari uh, the Catamari series really was one that I played, and that's another one that has a great like original soundtrack to it. But uh, some of these sports games here have fantastic like uh, kind of rock punk soundtracks, and uh, I, I really like that. So um, first one I grabbed up is no I'm Canadian, so I remember that. So uh, I grabbed the NHL 2K8. Now this one has uh, as Quiet Riot on it. Uh, Come on, field noise, which is a song I grew up with. Uh, Priestess is on this as well, I think. There's like there's a bunch of bands. I'm not sure if they say them on here. Uh, Block Party, Corn, uh, Stellar Star, Early Man, Tokyo Police Club, Les Savoy Five. Did I get that one? Did I pronounce that right? I'm not quite sure. But um, anyway, so I'm a big hockey fan. Um, that's uh, Spezza from uh, from the Ottawa Senators. On the uh, I think his name Jason Spezza on the cover. I was I'm a you know, I was in Ottawa for a while, so I'm a bit of a Sens fan. Uh, I wish they'd do, do better now, but uh, I am a bit of an Ottawa Senders fan anyway. And uh, again, when I grabbed it, uh, opened it up right away, it was complete in box. Just played this one actually as soon as I got home. I played this one before I played the uh, the wrestling games. I'm a huge wrestling fan. But uh, great. I mean, like the announcing on these things, I, I find uh, find pretty good. I scored two goals right away, so yeah. Still, still got that touch, and uh, comes around halftime. Quiet Riot comes on. They play some, uh, play a bit of like "Come On, Feel the Noise." I'm just totally pumped, really into it. So I had to grab this one. Uh, grab the rest of the series. I will get like I'm a completist, so I'll get the other NHL ones that came out for uh, the system. If for nothing else, for like to see the difference in the gameplay, and the uh, and the difference in like the in the soundtracks. Now I know that this one here. Updated. There's a like each one of these here is a kind of a franchise mode. Think of like the general. If you've only ever played the wrestling game, think of like a general manager, like a, a mode where basically you kind of you micromanage things. You control like uh, con your your team, trades, contracts, all that type of stuff. Um, this one here put like a, a salary cap into it as well. Just really uh, kind of really did a, a great job. It was a real a much deeper uh, franchise, and it actually says right there, deeper franchise. Uh, you know, waivers, two-way contracts, salary cap management features, on new negotiation system. Uh, that's really boring to some people, but that's really fun for me. I'm a big geek for that type of stuff. And the last one, I won't spend too much time on it, is uh, MLB 06, the show. So I like the show series. Uh, again, I I geek out on the franchise stuff. I love the fact that, you know, you be, if we come for like a game and they'll say something like, you know, like, like, player such and such is you know has, has been feeling well or he's got a sore arm do you want to keep him in do you want to rotate him out that type of thing and you uh, you know depending on the decisions you make it, it's going to affect your game and your team your players so i uh, i really i really do enjoy that uh you guys let me know if there's any uh, and again they say like a deeper franchise mode with this one here like more intuitive control to efficiently run your ball club you name it you control it i uh, enhance career modes just some awesome stuff uh Really glad to have that one. And uh, so those are the only four games that I have to date for my uh, for my PS2.
I love the, the uniformness of them. I love collecting for the PS2. Uh, and it's so nice. I mean, like, they have... Like, the old DVD cases are so nice. Um, I miss them. I mean, like, the Blu-ray cases are nice, but I miss the uh, the big old DVD cases that we use. That's why probably I still collect a lot of DVDs. I, I love the bigger artwork. I, I like the sturdiness of the cases. The really sturdy cases here. Um, so... There you go. That's my uh, my little retro gaming rant. Uh, Surf went on a little bit long, but I'm really excited about finally having a, a PlayStation 2 uh, for uh, Christmas this year. I think I'm going to like uh, ask uh, my uh, my mom to get me another like uh, a retro console, probably like a GameCube or an N64, something like that. Depends on like how deeply I get into the into the PS2. And right now I've been playing it like pretty much nonstop. So I've been like taking time off to, like, to make my Halloween Horror Thon reviews and going back and playing more games. So I apologize if my review's a little bit slower getting out. Uh, I did one for Leatherface today, so uh, uh, watch out for that one. And uh, I'm going to be doing one, uh, another one tonight before I, uh, before I go to sleep, and so I'm gonna be up. it's going to be a pretty late, pretty late night for me. But the weekend's coming up, so uh, it should be okay. Now, I wanted to do a, an over, basically uh, an update on one of my uh, one of my movie companies. So basically, when I went, you're going to notice a couple of things are missing there, and the reason for that is because when I went to uh, to Ottawa, one of the first things that I was able to do was pick up a couple of uh, Blue Undergrounds that I really, really needed. So I got a bunch of Blue Underground here. I'm going to show you my uh, my entire Blue Underground collection, and where a lot of it is Halloween or oriented. I'll look. I'll stop with uh, certain ones and I'll say, you know, okay, this is one that you should have. Basically, this is one I think should be in your collection. I'll say why. And we'll go on from there. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, the Blue Underground thing is coming up right now. I'm not even going to take a, a stop or a break or anything like that to uh, to bring it up. I'm just going to start. I'll start with the, uh, I don't want to start with the DVDs. The Blu I'll start with the Blu-rays first. And uh, we'll go into the uh, DVDs afterwards because I have more of the DVDs for Blue Underground. I like collecting Blue Underground on DVD actually. Uh, it's only recently with uh, some like Venom and stuff like that that, I've, that I actually like the the look of the Blue Underground on uh, on Blu-ray. But uh, so first up is Sergio Martino's Torso. It's a favorite of mine. It's got Susie Kendall. Uh, a fantastic, extremely tense last 15 minutes of this film. If you have not seen uh, Torso, uh, Serge Martino is definitely like right up there with our genre. He's, he is a master of uh, of this genre. He's a master of many genres. And uh, I got us. I love this movie. I have. This is one that gets constant rewatch from me. Uh, and this one here has like the. Um, it's got an interview with Sergio Martino. It's got the U.S. opening credits, theatrical trailers, TV spots, radio spots, poster, and stills gallery, and it's got like two versions of the um, of the film on here. I know that when this was put on a DVD originally, I think there was like uh, just the uh, the one version you could buy like different DVDs for different versions, but this one here has like uh, the both the uh, the original like theatrical version. Uh, over here in North America and an uncensored English version. So basically it's got an uncensored English version and full length Italian director's cut for the first time. So really cool to, to see that there. Just a great, great one. I do recommend this one. This is a great Halloween watching, by the way. So if you're into Jello and you don't have Torso, um, it's one like up to along the deep red and like Bird of Crystal Plumage. Torso is one that should be on your list of movies to pick up. If you like the sleazier side of it, and I so do. Uh, I love exploitation films. And Lucio Fulci, he uh, he was a master of them. He was a master of Italian exploitation. He made a lot of great stuff, and he was a jack of all trades when it came to uh, to making films. But one that I really really like is the New York Ripper. Now this can this definitely isn't a kids type of film. Uh, it's Fulci, so you know it's not a kids type of film unless you're doing a movie like White Fang. Then I guess this kind of is. But no, this one's not. And. Uh, it's a you know it's a giallo film but like combined with a slasher film, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty out there. This one was uh, given to me actually by uh, a good friend of mine, Sammy, and uh, he runs a, a gaming channel called Faligar. Now he used to do like a lot of uh, reviews, and I, I think he's doing some for Halloween, which I have to check out. I've been so busy like trying to get this done, but I have to check out the reviews he's doing for Call of Chucky as well. And uh, I think he agreed, like pretty much, with me on that. But the New York Ripper, I love this movie. I have this, so many versions of this film. 
I got it done shameless. I can actually show you this cover though, because uh, uh, I was actually doing some uh, some shooting from my Back to the Movie Library video. And if, by the way, guys, if you like the Back to the Movie Library videos and you want to see me doing more like that, please let me know because the uh, the content that I make is dependent upon you know you guys letting me know that it's the type of content that you want to see. And uh, one person did like say, yes, I want to see more to the Back to the Movie Library. So you, you will be definitely, you know, you're going to be getting more of that. You're going to be diving deeper into my collection and seeing more of that stuff. Uh, but for tonight, we're doing like a kind of a collection overview for the Blue Underground. New York Ripper, fun film, really cheesy, kind of sleazy, really sleazy. But uh, I just, I really enjoyed it. I definitely, I definitely recommend it for people that like the Expectation film. Next up is a Larry Cohen film, a really good one, and a uh, great cast, too, actually. Um, Tony, Tony LaBianco is in this. We've got, like, uh, Deborah Raffin, uh, Sylvia Sidney, Sandy Dennis, Mike Kellen, uh, a little role by Andy Kaufman, and, of course, the incomparable Richard Lynch is in this one as well. And that movie is God Told Me To. I'm not going to tell you a lot about this film, except that it's a really good film, and I do recommend it. Uh, I recommend Larry Cohen anyway. Um, he wrote the movies like The Stuff and the It's Alive trilogy. Um, his stuff, uh, I find his stuff really good. And you, there's a lot of layers to, uh, to Larry Cohen's stuff. But you can just, even though there, there are, it's not like kind of thrown in there. Like it doesn't make it unaccessible. His, all his movies can be just watched on a surface fun layer. Uh, he's, he's pretty incredible like that. He did like movies like Q the Winged Serpent, uh, Return to Salem's Lot, by the way. He, he made that one. Um, but this is actually a pretty good one. It's like audio commentary on here. There's interviews with the, uh, with some of the stars, the special effects artists. Uh, there's new Q and A with Larry Cohen on here, which I don't think I've actually watched. Uh, if you have watched God, it told me to. Maybe I should review this one sometime in the near future because this is a really good film. Next up is one that I did show off when I was doing my uh, my back to the movie library thing. So I'm not going to really get into it too much here, but it's the Toolbox Murders with uh, Cameron Mitchell and uh, and was Yuri. So if you not, have not seen this, I do recommend it. This is the original Toolbox Murders. This isn't the remake one. Uh, it's a really really fun film. Uh, again, um, it's exploitation, so you know there's the nudity and there's the violence, but it's based on a true story. Uh, there's a great little twist at the end that I really liked, and uh, it's it's gritty. It's it's you can tell it's the it's this type of '70s gritty type of feel to it that uh, that you know kind of would become like uh, would be would not be less than would would move into a different direction. But uh, I love the gritty feel of that film. Next up is a uh, is a film kind of like a uh, kidnapping film and a snake film, kind of rolled into one. You know what it is? I mentioned it earlier, and that is Venom here. Uh, that's of course Susan George on the cover there. There's uh, Sterling Hayden. You can see the people on there: Klaus Kinski, Sarah Miles, um, Nicole Williamson, and Oliver Reed. Great cast. Um, I love the way these are done now. I love the uh, the boxes like these here. Um, they got a girth. They got a feel to them, like a bigger feel. They don't feel so flimsy and uh, I like that they always have like these booklets in them now too and they'll have these here uh, you know there'll be blu-ray dvd combo packs sometimes there'll be a cd with them um not a lot of features on this one but there's an audio commentary and a booklet so uh that's pretty cool I got this one at HMV when I was selling it for like a really good price now next up are uh, two films that are by the guy that actually started Blue Underground and started Anchor Bay really that's Wim Lustig and uh First up is this amazing collector's edition. If you don't have it, make sure you get this one in your collection. It is so cool. And that is Mania Cop 2. There's some great features on this. It's a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. It's got a great little slip cover on it. It's embossed. Um, again, there's, there's audio commentaries. There's a making of. There's a Cinefilm Q&A on here. Uh, trailers, steel galleries, the whole works. It's really, really well done. really like this. This is a favorite film of mine. The Mania Cop series I really like. I even like part three. And um, speaking of part three, I got part three, Badge of Silence. Now, there's a lot of things. And again, you can see unrated version, so we're getting the unrated cut here as well. Um, there was a little bit less Mania Cop in here than I wanted it to be in part three, and uh, they did some different stuff. There was some, like, some stuff behind the scenes that, uh, that kind of helped like, derail this movie a lot. And you know what's really, really cool? There's a making of on here. There's a deleted extended scenes, trailers, poster still gallery, and original synopsis. If you want to see a making of a movie, here's a key thing. It's fantastic. It's great 
to see the making of a movie that went right, that, that did well. It is freaking fantastic to see the making of a movie that went off the rails, that had a lot of stuff happen. Because, especially if they're honest about it, and uh, then they are uh, in this one here. I do like, there's a, uh, Jackie O'Haley plays a part in this that I actually do like, to, you know, just to let you know, there's like kind of a, a little bit of a twist thing there that I, that I like with Jackie, Jackie O'Haley's character. I like Jackie O'Haley. Uh, it's a shame that he's such a good actor to take over the role of, uh, of uh, a Freddy, but then they put him in like horrible makeup and a bad script, and uh, no, it just didn't work, unfortunately. Good, what a wasted opportunity that, that was. But uh, he's in this one here as well. Uh, it's got a bit of voodoo in this one. Oh, man. Uh, I like this. Uh, Dex Avant's in here again. Uh, Robert Paul Gleason is in this one. Robert Zadar, of course, is in all of them. He's a maniac cop. So uh, there's my uh, my Blu-ray editions for there. Now I'm going to go through the uh, through the DVD stuff, and that's going to be... I'm going to just grab my tea up for a second, because if I move the DVDs over, then what's going to happen is I am also going to be moving over the table. Because I have, like... Eh, I have a table <coughs> that's not sturdiest right there, so I'm like just a portable table. So let's go through the uh, the blue undergrounds. So let's look at the ones that I got first, um, recently first. So first off, of course, is Maniac, the uh, Joe Spennell film. I love this. Uh, Joe Spennell is like a great character actor. Uh, the second highest paid actor in the movie Godfather. Uh, just a little bit of trivia there. And... Uh, there's like a, a an auto commentary with uh, co-producer director Wim Lustig. Of course, he did the Maniac Cop movies as well. Maniac, Maniac Cop, got a theme there. Uh, we got the Joe Spennell story, a 49 minute one. There's a radio interview with Lustig and Spennell and Carol Monroe. Of course, Spennell has uh, is gone. He's passed on now. This movie was done in 1980. Uh, special effects on this, of course, by uh, the awesome and really nice guy Tom Savini. And uh, I just really, really love this here. I'll probably grab the, uh, you know, the big special edition down the road. But man, I this I wanted this on D, I wanted this on DVD. I wanted it with the slip. I just with the Joe Spennell. I just needed to have this in this format with along going along some of my other ones. Same thing with this here, Stage Fright. This is one of my favorite Jallos. You know, Jallo slasher films. Uh, again, this, this is by us, and hopefully I'm getting the name is Michelle. I really. I don't want to say I don't care if I get the name wrong, but, you know, if I get the name wrong, so what? I'm Michelle Suave. Oh, Suave. Uh, and uh, just a bunch of features on here. A ton of stuff, interviews. Um, yeah, just a ton of interviews on here. I'm so excited to actually, like, to rewatch this one again. And this freaked me out because of this. Look, see this? See that owl thing? This owl mask. Is creepy as hell. So that, um, you may not find this, creepy. this. Just opening that and looking into that owl mask freaks me out. It literally does. I saw that movie so many times. And when I uh, when I met my better half, she, we were talking about horror movies that we saw when we were younger. Now, side rant. Um, she lived in Morocco, and the way that a lot of movies were were got then were uh, were bootleg tapes and stuff. So what they'd get. And uh, there would be like two or three movies, on, like on VHS, and they wouldn't know what they were. They'd just go to the, go to this place, and they'd say they wanted movies, and they and they might say like I want you know, this action or horror or something like that, or sometimes they'd just say movies. And what they do is you they'd give you a tape, they have two or three movies on it. You go, you'd watch that, you bring it back, you get another tape, that type of thing. Um, this is the early days of like VHS and all that stuff, and finally, basically to, to get like really like quality VHS to basically you end up like when her dad was, was flying, her dad was a pilot. Uh, so when he's flying off to uh, to Paris or, or New York or somewhere like that, then you know he grabbed like stuff around, I think like Indiana Jones and like uh, Dan Star Wars, those were some of the first tapes she got and like some cartoon ones. So she asked me about this movie that, she, that she'd seen. She said it was a movie with a killer and he had a a mask, kind of like a bird mask type of thing. Like she thought, she thought it was an owl mask. So one day, 
um, were hanging out and I, I found it. So I actually, at, the, at that time, it was in the early days, you couldn't find sage for it anywhere, so I found it through I get nefarious purposes uh, because it just wasn't available. And uh, I got it and we, we watched it. And she was so freaked out uh, that entire, the, the entirety of the time. And I actually, literally, legit, I'd like turn off the lights and put it on. And I knew I was freaking her out, but uh, I'm a bit of, a, a bit of an ass that way. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was one that we both really, really loved and freaked us both out. Freaked her out over in North, in North Africa, in there in Morocco. It freaked me out here in Canada. So, uh, horror crosses borders, right? So, <laughs> that's a little story. Next up is the final countdown. I just, I love this cover. Just look at this, man. Uh, what, I want to cast it. Kirk Douglas, Martin Sheen, James Fran Farentino, right? James Farentino, yeah. Um. It's there. It's not there. It's there. It's not there. Okay, I'm a big kid. Uh, now, this is a special edition. This is actually is uh, 32,649 of 100,000. Remember when DVDs sold to the point where this would seem like, oh my God, I better get this because this 100,000 is going to sell out. And now, like, we freak out when it's, you know, when it's 3,000. Uh, yeah, there was a time when, like, this stuff went and you know everybody ran to get it pretty fast at 50,000 and 100,000 so you can see the change in like the uh, in like uh, in DVD sales there would never be like 3,000 would last n no time or 1,000 or 2,000 back in the uh, back in the day when like everybody's collecting physical media and this has got a beautiful cover of the case too. look at that it's kind of just like this ice blue case which I really like and so it's got a bonus disc here that's like thing um, like Coffin has something to do with this okay an interview with an associate producer like Cop, an interview with the Jolly Rogers F-14 Fighter Squadron, a poster stills gallery, Kirk Douglas bio, and on the DVD-ROM, because back then you'd have, like, you better put your DVD into, like, a computer and get extra stuff on it. So there's, like, a uh, something called Zero Pilot Journal. Uh, the first disc has uh, auto-commentary, theatrical trailers, TV spots, and just uh, so you guys can see the inside there, so. Just beautifully done, eh? Next up is another full chief film, but this is a. Uh, is this one even R rated? <clears throat> I'm not sure. Yeah, it probably is. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, Conquest. Uh, you know, I have it, the shirt for this film. By the way, I got this like an image on a shirt. I, I did like this film. It's kind of fun. Like it's kind of cheesy. Uh, I like these. Uh, I like fantasy films. I've always been a big fan of. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I like the Lord of the Rings films, but I like these other cheesier fantasy films uh, a bit better for me. Uh, like I, uh, I'm not. I would never like argue that these were better made than the Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. It's just I get such a pleasure out of films like uh, films like this. And look at that, look at that cover. Look at how gorgeous that is. Uh, just the, just the artwork alone, Conquest. And we got like uh, Tactical Trailers, poster, not a lot of features on here. But you know, just to have it, I would just, and I didn't, I paid a, I think I paid a bit, I paid about 20 bucks for this one when I, when I originally bought it. So uh, uh, I'm not sure if that's the original copy or if that's like one I bought afterwards. So next up is a Marabava film. And that is the last Marabava film, and that is Shock. I, uh, again, this one. Has this one ever gotten like a really great release? John Steiner and Derry Nicolodi in there. So you got like people from like uh, our gentle films. So uh, if you haven't seen Shock, I do recommend it. This is uh, I got an interview with Lamberto Babb, who is the co-writer, basically assistant director. He worked a lot on a lot of his of his father's films, a lot of our gentle films before he actually went out on his own and made movies like Demons. So the U.S title for this is Beyond the Door 2, so more than likely you've seen this uh, with the VHS cover, if you're as old as me, back in the day with that Beyond the Door 2 like picture on there. I really like that shock cover picture, and the only first time I ever saw that was on the uh, Blue Underground, before I saw like this Beyond the Door 2, and I had this door, and there's like face in the foreground, it was kind of weird. Now, here's a favorite of mine. Uh, when it comes to like zo zombie films, I... Uh, I, I just like this one. Uh, shockwaves, Nazi zombies, underwater Nazi zombies. Uh, the guy from Flippers in this. 
Um, yeah, uh, it's, there's a commentary on here as well uh, with, uh, of course, Fred Olin Ray and the director, Ken Wiederhorn, and, and makeup designer Alan Ormsby. If the name Alan Ormsby sounds really familiar to you, it's because he worked a lot with kind of like guys like Bob Clark and that, like doing movies like you know, Children Should Play with Dead Things. Um, I think he worked on, you may have, I know that Tom Savini worked on Death Dreams. I mean, he may have like, worked with Tom Savini on Death Dreams. I uh, know that he worked on, um, I know that he worked on Children Should Play with Dead Things. And if you want to really, really go back there, uh, he, Alan Ormsby wrote a book for Scholastics with a lot of the, about like monsters, like the universe of monsters and like making your own makeup on it, on there. It's a, uh, it's a really cool book. And I, I think I bought it again a while back. I'm not sure if it made it through the trip or not, but if it did, I'll show. I'll... So it stopped there for a second, which means I'm going to speed this up a little bit. I don't want to make this too long. My better ass can be like uploading this. Uh, but again, Shockwaves, a great little film. I love the fact, you know, there's like, there's always usually like some something, even if it's just a small picture on the inside of the cover. Um, it's great the way that's done. Next up is a Jallo film starring uh, Franco Nero. Uh, and I'm a, I'm a big Nero fan. Who else was in this one here? Oh, true. So it is the fifth chord. I uh, actually, actually really did like this one. I love the cover. Don't you love the cover on Jallos? It's just so cool. And this one here is, was back before they put like uh, the pictures on the inside. But I do like the fact that I have the 2006 Blue Underground catalog in here. So, let's take a second look. Speak. So, on the back they're showcasing their Blinded collection, which I do have in my collection, by the way. So you see all, all those beautiful Blue Underground covers. I, I got all those. I'm, I'm proud of that. It took me a long time to get the Blinded collection. So here's just a few of them right there. Look, you guys can actually pause it if you want to and see some of the cool things that were there. So basically, the Larry Cohen collection was out, and it was out of print. Uh, Killer Nun. There was one, the Mondo Kane collection was out of print. Two Evil Eyes, two disc edition was out of print. Uh, I wonder, Snuff there, you know, that was out of print as well. They let you know when things went out of print. i got to check to see if any of my stuff actually is out of, uh, is out of print. Dead and Buried. Oh, I need that movie. I don't think I got that movie. Yeah, that's a really good one. Uh, that's out of print. Final Countdown, two disc limited edition, which we just looked at, was out of print. So, now I want you to take, like, just let that sink in for a second there, that the movie the final countdown with a hundred thousand copies limited edition that went out of print back in the day and by the way there actually is writing in a picture on the inside so more than likely this was in a white case originally and the person that uh that got broke up the case and uh, gave it to me in a black case so next up i remember buying this one from uh, cd plus and i love this movie if you haven't seen it you really really should and that is The Living Dead at Manchester Morgue. Uh, this is the two-disc edition of it, uh, you know, special edition right there. Uh, I've always been a really big fan of this film. Ray Lovelock's in this. I'm a really big fan of Ray Lovelock. I love, love the stuff that he does together. Uh, so basically, Let Sleeping Corpses Lie, if you ever heard of that one. This is it, actually. Dome of the Window as well. That This is it. It's just got like a bunch of different titles to it. There's like a bunch of like interviews on here as well. I'll just slide it out really quickly. Open it up, and okay, I'm loving this right now. So there's the 2008 Blue Underground catalog here, as well, and uh, I love finding stuff like that. So anytime I can find anything complete like that, same as the video game stuff, and I find anything kind of complete in the box with the uh, with the case, I I'm it's so it's so I'm so stoked with that. This might be the only edition I have of this for quite a while because I cannot afford to buy the edition that's coming out. <laughs> But at least I have the film. And I don't have the three disc one, but I do have the two disc one. And that is Suspiria. Suspiria. I, uh, I'm a huge fan of this film. It's a beautiful film. Uh, this is actually a favorite film of... Uh, oh, I've got a few different people, but... Uh, God, I can't remember the name right now. It's like on the tip of my tongue. I hate when that happens. It's the guy that started in the remake of Maniac. Elijah Wood, that's it. That's one of his favorite like horror films. Yeah, it's the one he says he can just put on and just like have it in the background type of thing. And I agree with him on that. It's a gorgeous film. There's some uh, great stuff. There's a Spiria 25th anniversary. I like it. Is the is the bonus disc on here? And uh, there is actually a three disc edition that has like a CD soundtrack as well. 
but I, I don't have that one. I would love to have that one. And, uh, 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 no, no, no. My tea is there. Cat was like... I remember when I talked to you about Torso earlier on, like at the very beginning of this uh, segment. I'm a huge fan. I, I was not joking. I'm a huge fan of, this, uh, of the movie Torso. And this one here is... Uh, The, the uncut, uncensored version. Not the, the, the director's version, but the uncut, uncensored version came out first. I think there was two of them. And the way they did it, the one had a black cover, and one had a different, had a blue cover, and one had a, like a different, a red cover. Something like that. You, or a yellow cover and a red cover type thing. You get both of them. Something like that. I can't remember now. But again, like there's a, uh, no, there's no like features on this. Just uh, international and used theatrical trailers are on here. Uh, you know, Susie Kendall, same cover. Nope, we're not going to get any uh, any catalogs on that one. It's too bad. Isn't that fun when you find that? Next up is one uh, Shape of Things Come. I had to grab this on one side. This is, you know, Fun Cheese, obviously. Uh, Carol Lindley, Jack Palance, Barry Morris, John Arlen, Nicholas Campbell, Eddie Benton. Uh, just a, an amazing cast. Uh, it's got a French satirical trailer on here. TV spots, poster and stills gallery. Hey. So we got a, it doesn't have like a year or anything like that, but it has a little like a fallout like a thing. And Two Evil Eyes and all that wasn't even at, or found with hair down, but they weren't even at a print at that point. That's really cool. <laughs> I'm easily amused. Uh, the Manuel Cain collection was just coming out then, look at that. Hope you guys are enjoying this type of stuff as, as much as I enjoy like Megan's type of stuff for you because I really do enjoy it. Um, this one I bought, I found this sealed for 50 cents at a, at a yard sale in, um, it was in St. John's. Couldn't believe it. There was like a, a one, there's a Gettysburg movie there, a documentary on Gettysburg that looks like it looked like it was actually bought at, at Gettysburg. At like probably at the gift shop in Gettysburg, and there was this, and it wasn't even opened. Uh, and it is uh, another Sergio Martino film, actually. I th I'm pretty sure it's Sergio Martino. Yeah, it is. Uh, Mountain of the Cannibal God. So again, that's Ursula Andress, and uh, definitely is. Uh, yeah, she. Uh, yeah, that is that is not not a drawing. That it's actual picture of the gorgeous Ursula Andress, of course, from the first James Bond film, Doctor No. Uh, there's like an interview with Martino on here. This is the definitive edition of this notorious shocker, completely restored from original vault materials, now including the legendary and never before seen footage of deviant sexuality from the private collection of director Sergio Martino. So Stacey Keach is in this one as well. Um, not for everybody's taste, but I, uh, I did enjoy this movie. I had a lot of fun with it. Next up is one I have like a, f a few different editions of, but I went to like a store that was closing out, like a video store, and I, I grabbed up this one to get like the extra features that weren't on the Arrow edition that I had, and I got like at least two or three editions of this film right now. I'm a huge Fulci fan, as you guys know, <laughs> and that is City of the Living Dead. I love this cover here, I like the way that's done. Uh, again, there's like a bunch of like the making of the City of the Living Dead with a bunch of features on her. Uh, you know, Sergio Stavaletti being interviewed, Michelle Suave, co-star in this one, who actually directed the uh, the movie Stage Fright. So, there's no uh, booklet in that one, but it was like, got from like a video store, so I didn't guess there would be. Uh, this one I bought brand new, same as the, uh, I bought it actually with, uh, when I bought The Living Dead of Manchester Morgue. I bought that in Living Dead of Manchester Morgue, Torso. And this one here, they're on sale for like 14 bucks each or something, or something like that. And uh, that was a Blue Underground's edition of The Prowler. Uh, I'm a huge, again, I'm a huge slasher fan. I grew up in the 80s. Uh, Tom Savane does great work on this. Farley Granger is amazing in this film. Uh, some people actually find this kind of slower, but I really like this one. Uh, I love the kills in this one. Got some great stuff. Love the ending, the big shock at the ending of it. Uh, Joseph Zito, the guy that directed Friday the 13th, the final chapter, actually, he directed this uh, first. This was like, you can think of this as like his, uh, his resume, his CVA for, uh, his CV for Friday the 13th, the final chapter. So there you go, guys. That is my Blue Underground 
um, collection. We talked on retro gaming. I'll let you guys know, and I'll let you know again. There's a sale going on right now on Code Red DVDs on Screen Archives. So get yourself over there if you want to grab some of those. Grab me some of those. I would like that. <laughs> get on over there and get some get some cool stuff. Uh, have a great evening, guys. <clears throat> Screen Archives does have. <clears throat> I apologize, my voice is going now. Has a bit of a. They're not the cheapest when it comes to uh, to shipping. But when movies are $1.95 or $2.95, you can uh, balance that out a bit. Thank you for watching. I'm the Movie Prof. I've, I've, this has been the Buck 99 Podcast. I've enjoyed this night with you guys, and uh, have a great evening. Thanks for watching. For me right now, as you can tell by my voice, it is seriously 110% time for tea. Night, guys.